Welcome, everybody, to another edition of NASCAR Radio. This is episode number 76. NASCAR Radio, where trading cards and racing meet. I'm your pal, Val, and, of course, with me is the amazing Jason. Jason, how are you? I'm doing well, as always, Val. And the man, myth, legend, Hall of Famer, King NASCAR. Logan, how are you? Uh, not as wacky. Yeah. <laughs> Got a the good show. <laughs> what was that? The wackiness is wearing off. Yes. Have a good show. We got a recap show. We got an award ceremony here today, as well as NASCAR news. So all the racing has finished for the year. Now it's just time for the awards. And I guess get ready for 2022. Before we get started, let's uh, like to do a shout out here to our listeners uh, in Germany and Argentina, as well as Belgium and, of course, Canada and all the states in the United States, Texas, North Carolina, South Carolina, Delaware, Illinois, California, Virginia, New York, Ohio, Florida, Georgia, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, Maine, Alabama, Indiana, Tennessee, Arizona, Connecticut, Kentucky, Michigan, (laughs) Nebraska, New Jersey, Wisconsin, Iowa, Minnesota, New Hampshire, Washington, Wyoming. Thank you, everybody, for listening to the show. I don't know if I can do all that without breathing. <laughs> Thanks everybody for listening. Of course, we can't do it. We do it for you guys, and we can't we do it without you. So, but first, let's thank our sponsors, Panini America, our seasonal sponsors, Duncan's Toy Chest, Little Nero's Pizza, and Greenway Press. Thank you. But I guess it's time, gentlemen, for the awards. So, do you want to talk about? Um, the polls and, and where you posted them and everything. That would be really good to do. Yeah. So we posted polls on Facebook, two different groups, the nut site and the racing trading card breaks buy, sell and trade. If you're not a member of those, I would recommend them. And also on Twitter at NASCAR radio kind of had two polls going one was the best NASCAR trading card release of 2021. And our top, our contenders were 2021 Dunruss Racing, 2021 Panini Chronicles Racing, 2021 Prism Racing. And then also the best new 2021 NASCAR Super Short Print Insert. This year we were treated to Dunruss Sketchworks, Dunruss Watercolors, Dunruss Blank Slate, Prism Lava Flow, and was Prism USA an insert? Mm Mm-hmm. Super Short Print? Yeah, it was the one where they've got the the flag in the background. I wasn't sure that was a Super Short Print. I thought that was just a regular insert. It's pretty short printed because I've watched a lot of breaks here lately. And you may see out of a half a case, you may see one or maybe two uh, pop up. So they're pretty limited because the zebra cards are coming out about the same rate as well. So and everybody wants those zebra cards. Prism uh, stepping up with all the short prints. There's a ton of them this year, man. I, I think it's cool. Same thing with Dunros, but really nothing in Chronicles. No. I mean, I guess the sh- shortest printed thing is probably the Spectra cards. Yeah, to, to a box, but yep. Seems to be that way for all the sports, too, with the Spectra. Well, I guess we should. Uh, who wants to do the presentation? Well, you have all the numbers. <laughs> you <laughs> have the numbers, too. Well, that's I true. I have I, all I the. Co- I haven't collated all the numbers together. I think you have, that's, haven't you? That's true. I do, and I've got them officially from Webster, Webster, and Cohen, our accounting firm. Yeah, so, we move. We move from those guys. We move from Dewey, Cheatham, and Hal to those guys. Yes, I don't trust those guys. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we should cue up the band. So, the best new 2021 NASCAR Super Short Print 
out of Pr Pr Prism USA, Donors Sketchworks, Donors Watercolors, Donors Blank Slate, and Prism Lava Flow. The envelope, please. And our winner is Donor Sketchworks. Yeah, yeah, those are nice cards. I like those cards. Yes, and our best NASCAR trading card release of 2021 between Prism, Chronicles, and Donruss Racing. The envelope, please. That was a little tough one here. And the winner <laughs> is 2021 Prism Racing. <laughs> Yay, go Prism! <laughs> of course, uh, uh, Panini, um, we we'll have to set the awards here for Panini. Uh, they are busy producing other cards. Yeah, you guys should have seen Val tear, tear in the envelope. He's the anti-bionic man. <laughs> <laughs> he was having trouble. <laughs> well, they're pretty thick. The Webster, 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 and Cohen. Those are like, I don't know, 500 count paper there. That's... Yeah, we got to talk to those guys about that. They, they're probably charging us for that. I'm, I'm sure. So, so what do you guys think? Um, I, I was surprised at the prism beating Chronicles. Uh, Jason, you remember last year, uh, Chronicles was the win. Actually, it was uh, kind of jumped from Twitter and Facebook, but this year it was unanimous across the two. It's tough. I mean, I, on one hand, I'm not surprised at all because – Prism is, to me, besides, you know, top flagship, which is, doesn't count for racing, Prism seems to be the favorite brand for everything. Uh, you know, everybody has their, their different favorites, but Prism seems to be not unanimous, but at least getting votes everywhere from everybody is, you know, something that they can get on board with. Um, Chronicles is still a work in progress for people. They, I don't think you either understand the concept or you don't with so many different sets. And I think with you having 25, 30, 40, 50 cards per set, it's tough because I think we talked about it when we opened it this year. I don't know if I want to collect everything or just pick a couple. And I think from the minute you, that you open a pack, you're torn on what to do. Um, and then, you know, with Prism and Don Russ, you're not in that boat at all. You kind of know what to expect, just a new design. So not surprised, but just a little bit that it wasn't as close as it was last year. Yeah, I think, I, Jason, I think you hit it right there. Um, it made me think of when we were talking, when we all opened some wax and we were talking about the collation and stuff. And um, Logan, you know, stands up to me, stands out that he mentioned about the collation and not, you know, being able to complete some of those sets after the number of blasters and wax boxes he opened. But, you know, with the prism, you open prism and, you know, it's all prism. And if you're working on the set or whatever it is, so it makes sense with the Chronicles, because, you know, if you're a set person, Chronicles is tough. Yeah, I, I agree with that because it's like what you said. You know, I opened up four, I think, was it four boxes of Chronicles plus a bunch of blasters, and I still wasn't able to complete any of those sets at all, any of those small sets, even the ones that had like 25 cards in them. And, uh, you know, some cards I would get like six, seven, eight of one card and I wouldn't get one of uh, another card that I needed. So the collation to me, that's kind of one of the things that hurt Chronicles this year. I mean, Chronicles is my favorite set. That's what I voted for was Chronicles. But because I like the diversity and all the different small sets and, you know, hopefully you can uh, complete all those. But with Prism. You know, remember I had four I ordered four hobby boxes of those, and I was able to make three complete sets out of those. So that tells you how good the collation was with Prism. So I don't understand why the the collation was so bad with Chronicles this year. I mean, I, I like to think that they're using the same 
a uh, factory and company to to pack pack out those cards. Well, not only uh -huh. that, Prism is not the one that most people want a base set of, and you're getting that many out of you know three or four boxes. You're getting two to four sets, and it's like <laughs> it's completely backwards. That's not what people want typically on the Prism. Prism is shiny autographs and color, not base sets. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree. I mean, everybody wants the numbered stuff. Everybody wants all the all the different variations and all the color, you know, getting the rainbows and all that. And it's not really a you're right. It's really not a set collector set. So it's weird that you can get sets out of that, but you can't get sets out of a, a set that, you know, if you're going to collect it, you're going to probably collect all the individual little sets. That's a good point. Chronicles to me is, you know, and I can't. I've done it enough on the show. Like I, I love Chronicles in every sport. Chronicles to me is that thing of no matter what type of collector you are, you can open it and enjoy it and then move on to the next thing or continue to build upon it. But once you open it, it's that thing of you kind of can't stop yourself from enjoying that product because there's so much variety and no pack. I, I can't imagine any pack ap across the entire run is exactly the same. No, I, I would agree with that because I opened up a whole bunch of those and, you know, I, I saw some, a few small patterns of cards in there, but for the most part, they were, they were pretty random as far as packs were concerned. You, you, you know, like if I, if I was to look and I got a Sam Mayer card, you know, I didn't know what card was going to come next after that. If it was going to be a Richard Petty or Jimmy Johnson or Haley Deegan or whatever. So, but, but I've noticed on these, uh, breaks that I've been watching on YouTube that like, for example, Ty Gibbs, his card comes up and then like three cards later, there's Richard Petty. And I've noticed that like every single time, those things are very predictable on what cards you're going to get in a pack. You know, when you see one, you go, you know, oh, I'm going to get so-and-so in the same pack. So Val, the one that we haven't hit on yet is Don Russ. And I know you're a big set collector. Why do you think there is such a gap between we only had three options? So between two and three, when three always being Don Russ, why do you think there's such a dramatic gap between there? Yeah, I was looking at that. You know, for every one person that like Don Russ, two people like Chronicles, and then uh, and for every you know person like Don Russ Racing, four people like Prism. Right. So. Right. Yeah, I was, you know, just wondering while and, and while we were, you guys were talking about that, about, you know, this Dumbrose, uh is that in trouble? I mean, Dumbrus had the fifth anniversary buybacks, which was kind of on the sly, as well as the super short print, multiple uh, short prints with the watercolors, which is one of the ones that I liked. Blank slate, not so much in the sketchwork. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe because it came out in February and it's not really shiny. Well, it's, and it's, it's kind of the. About it's also got last year's uniforms and teams and stuff on them too. Yeah, I think that definitely hurts them. But to get something out around Daytona, and Logan, I know you this, and and we've talked about this before on the show, Jason, that they have that a uh, few weeks before Daytona that they have all the they get all the photographs and stuff, all the drivers with the media week. Uh, getting that the new drivers and uh, uniforms and everything like that. So to try to get that done in time, but I, I don't know. It's um, and most of the other sponsors are the same. So a lot of that doesn't move, but I think it maybe it's just so early in the season that I don't know, out of sight, out of mind, because, you know, we have prism here, which was the last release bringing in the most votes. The Chronicles was released. Um, I think that was in the fall, if I remember right. It wasn't ready for uh, national, I think. So it was not. So I don't know. I'm looking forward to the new Dumbrus with the 1989 design. Yeah, I think that's going to look neat. <clears throat> is that yeah, going to be a whole set design, or is that going to be an insert like it was for the 88s? Or not an insert, but it wasn't the entire a set. Yeah, it's that like retro. It, it's another. Oh, it's like the second half of the set is the right. retro design. Yeah, I imagine they're gonna keep that going the way it's been going uh, since 2017, 
and you know that's kind of the flagship base set so you know not a lot of pizzazz in that one you know if you think or compare it to like tops or whatever you know it's just kind of the old reliable yeah and you know it's got a lower price point but then of course you don't get as many hits out of them either i mean last year it was like one autograph and two memorabilia cards you know it's not like prism where you get you know four autos so that i think that that also helps i think partially and you know this is side you know a side tangent here and we've talked a long time ago about this i would love to see them use that don rust design the way that tops uses the heritage to get that traditional card stock that's not the glossy and kind of see how that would go um as a fourth or fifth set every year yeah i would love, love to see something like that yeah kind of like what they what press pass did with element you know, yeah, they use, they use that same kind of old school card stock, and I, and I like that on those cards. And you know, it's really cool if you wanted to to get those things autographed. They were easy to autograph. You didn't have right. to worry about powdering them down and you know getting getting them prepped to get you know take the shiny off of them to get them autographed. You could just hand them, just mail them out, hand them out, and get them autographed, no problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, with only the three or four releases a year for NASCAR, I don't. It's not that they haven't done some innovative stuff, but, and I don't know, you know, we all know that it's not one of the big four. So right. uh, the amount of resources that they put into it, again, we've, you know, we got a few new things this year. Uh, you know, speaking of Dunruss and then also with Prism with a few other things that they've added. So, you know, I don't know how the, the nor the regular or other racing card collectors feel about you know some of that stuff if, if they'd go for some of that or not and I guess Panini's definitely not you know testing the waters on some of this stuff so I think they've kind of settled into this Prism Chronicles and Dimers Racing so we'll have to see what 2022 brings if they repeat this or uh, if they shake some stuff up. Yeah, Chronicles is definitely their best way to test a product because they can release whatever 13, 17 brands at once and, you know, see what the market reaction is to it. That's definitely their way to test things because, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought between the first Chronicles and then where we are now, they've not included the exact same sets. They've had a couple of changes here and there. Yeah, I think when we went through the list uh, for that show, comparing it to last year, I think there were four or five new uh, series. I think Black comes to mind as one of them. I think there was the, the gold ones. Gold standing. Uh, I think so. I think that was new. And then we had... Um, what was the, the moon one or the like orbit or something like... Titan. Titan, yeah. That yeah, they yeah. had that both years. Okay, but there are a few other ones that um, we had mentioned, and was it? Um, I know we're going off on a tangent here, but um, I want to say Pinnacle had one. Well, let me ask you guys this: Do you think you know with the four different releases that we're getting in a year, is there enough room for a fifth release? Should it be? them bringing back one or introducing a new one? I I think there's room. I mean, so if it's like last year, and I guess it was the year before, you know, we have Dunruss in February. Then we used to have Victory Lane for a few years in that April, May kind of slot. Then we had something hit in July around the National. Then we had one around October. And then uh, National Treasures in the fall. Uh, last year, I think we went from, and of course, last year was a different, different all around for multiple reasons. But we had Dumbrows hit in the February, and then Chronicles didn't hit until late in uh, after the National. I think it was uh, maybe September, October, and then we know Prism was late as well. So, no, Chronicles was at the National. Remember, we bought some. We did. Did we? Okay. So let's say, because I agree that they could definitely do a fifth, because then you're looking at every 
two and a half months, roughly. So every 10 weeks or so. But let's just say that they used my idea and made some type of heritage-esque product. And then a Panini spokesman came out and said, well, it was between this and Prime, or this and Certified. I could definitely see an uproar of, well, I would have rather had the hits from Certified and Prime than I would have a new product that is heritage-esque when there's not as much lineage for NASCAR trading cards. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, or even go so far as to take something out of Chronicles and, and make that its own standalone product, like tight, like you know, like the right. Titan, which I think would be cool if they did those. They're shiny; they, they look really neat. Um, you know, they could do score, you know, or something like. That. I mean, so who knows? I mean, the the, the possibilities are in, endless for them. Well, we'll see what um, what they do this uh, next year. See if they're listening to the collectors or what uh, Tim and the team have in plan in store for us in 2022. So let's talk about this new uh, insert, this super short print insert. While I wasn't as surprised on the uh, trading card release voting, I was a little bit surprised on this one. Um, I didn't see. Sketchworks, correct? Now I'm blanking. Yes. So I didn't yep. see Sketchworks being the winner. Um, I really thought it was going to be like the Lava Flow. I thought it was going to be a Prism as well on this one. Uh, so that kind of surprised me. If it was up to me, I would have chosen Blank Slate to kind of get that color contrast between the white background and the color uniforms. But... Uh, the sketch works definitely surprised me. Yeah, and I don't know how much got skewed from my survey because I allowed you know other folks to add stuff. But we had Kevin add the color blast, which was not necessarily new this year, uh, and that, that garnered a lot of votes. So I'm not sure how those votes would have went. Right. Uh, color blast definitely is the most popular of the sh super short prints. I think across any of the brands. Uh, downtown, no matter what. So I don't know, you know, where those votes might have went. Uh, I thought it was going to be watercolors. I thought that was a much more colorful card, as opposed to Sketchworks or that blank slate. But yeah, so I, it surprised me as well. Yeah, I, I, I third that. Yeah, I'm surprised as well. Yeah, I would have thought Lava Flow would have had more love since it was a prison product, but. Because it's, I mean, if you watch the eBay auctions, there's a lot of movement on those and they're going for some, I mean, they're not as high as Color Blast or something like that, but they're still, you know, garnering some pretty good money. So that tells me right there that they are popular, but it, it just didn't show up in our survey. It's an odd card design for me because if you look at the front of the card, you know, and unfortunately we're not doing video yet to show... But if you look at the front of the card, there's no brand, there's no set name, there's nothing. It's just a picture of the driver or in the other sets, you know, the player. I, I, you know, and of course everything's on the back, but I think that takes away from it a little bit. Um, it's still prism, it's still color and all the, all the shiny, but I think that hurt it. It's my opinion, may or may not be right, but I think the lack of information, to put it generally, kind of hurts that design and that set. I would agree with that. I think they needed something else on the front to distinguish that. I mean, when you hit a color blast, you know it doesn't look like uh, the rest of the cards. That's true. And when I've been watching these case breaks, you know, I've only seen, out of all the ones I've watched, I've seen one lava flow pop and i've seen one color blast pop out and it's like what you said when that color that color blast popped out of there i mean you knew it and you you knew you had something I mean, the lava flow is is shiny and it kind of looks like it might just be a regular insert you know so you, you're not 
because I know when I was opening up, opening up my boxes, you know, I, if, if I, if I had hit one with, without knowing it, I mean, I would have just gone on past it thinking, you know, Hey, this is just a, another one of the inserts and, and kept moving on. It reminds me of something that you would get out of those national, like the silver and gold packs where there's some value there for a little while, but after a couple of weeks, they kind of, they kind of die off. Yeah. That's a good observation. I, I agree with that. Yeah. I guess we'll have to see if uh, they continue lava flow next year. Uh, I'm, you know, they've tried a few different super short prints, you know, and, and they're, they're testing the waters here and, you know, to see if that brand or that short print sticks. So uh, we know color blast is here to stay. Definitely. Yeah. We'll, we'll see what comes out in Donruss. See if they yeah, continue the sketch works and watercolors and all that. Because I remember them having the slingshots, and that was a one-year thing as well. Yeah, I like those. You because know, it had Richard Petty and it had Carl Edwards doing the backflip, and you know they were kind of you know like a cartoon or a comic book style you know card, but I still think they were really neat. I, yeah, they were tough. And uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Tony Stewart were the other two. Yep. And now you can pick them up for like, you know, 15, 20 bucks, which, which that's why I've been going back and collecting some of that. Yeah. You can pick them up good prices now, but man, when they were, they were new. Remember uh, when we were at the national Val, I bought that, that graded Beckett, Tony Stewart one from, I forget the guy that had all the national treasures. And uh, I ended up busting it out and getting it submitted to PSA. And it actually came back a 10. I think it was like a, a nine in Beckett, which was odd that it got a 10 in, in PSA. Yeah, it's, um, well, I'm surprised that because it's a new card and went right to grading, I, I don't know, either Beckett saw something or PSA didn't see something. I don't know. Or, or vice versa. Yeah, it wouldn't hurt my feelings if they brought those back because I like them. Yeah, I thought they were definitely interesting. Kind of, like I said, cartoonish with the big head and, and the graphics and stuff. So, but if you're a big fan of Lava Flow, you know um, now's the time, I guess, to get them if they're not um, if they're not priced too high. Uh, definitely, Cold Blast is something if you're looking for. I don't know about picking those up right now with some of those prices I'm seeing. No, the, all of those are high right now. Even the ones from last year are very high as well. And I remember seeing somebody selling a complete set last year on the nut site for like 500 bucks. Oh, that's a steal now. Yeah. It's incredible. Uh, I don't know if anybody has any more thoughts on it. There were a couple of comments. Uh, David Bachman uh, said as much as he loved Chronicles, the lack of numbered cards, autographs, autos compared to 2020 when all autos were numbered uh, made, made me go back to Prism. Uh, and then uh, Frank Lanky said that Prism became very boring to him, especially since he could never pull a Kyle Busch spotlight signature numbered yeah, I mean, everybody has their own criteria for why they they like the sets and why they don't. Yeah, but I appreciate them taking the poll and leaving a comment. Gives us some uh, more insight into uh, what everybody's thinking as well, you know, if um, we agree or not. So, yeah, but it's interesting that, you know, it's almost two to one prefer Prism this year. Yeah, like I said, I'm to me, Prism is just your regular you know it's 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 kind of to me like i don't know when i was a kid you know waiting for the tops baseball to come out you know this 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 just the regular you know set you know i guess prism is like the regular set for for nascar you know since it was the very first set that they did back in 2016 so i was like you know dunross would be more of the the baseline even though it didn't come out in uh, 16, it has been continuous since uh, 17. I don't know why. I, I need to talk to uh, Tim and them and ask them about why there was no prism in 2017. They did the select instead. Yep, that's a question for the national. Yeah, 
because there really hasn't been any one particular set since the 2016. Everybody's had a break in there one way or the other. Uh, Torque, no, they no longer produce. What you said about Select, and we kind of mentioned it earlier about Chronicles being like the test run set. Prism is an odd thing for you to remove to test another product. It seems like if, and I know in a year, we have Don Russ, we have Prism, National Treasures, and then like an alternating brand. But Prism seems like the no-brainer that that guy should have, whoever suggested it should have been thrown out of that meeting. Like that just seems <laughs> like an odd, an odd choice. But what, so what year again was that and what else came out that year? So 16, remember that was their first year that they produced cards. And so at the national, they had 2016 Prism. Then came 2016 Torque. Right. Then uh, December of 2016, 2016 Certified. Right. And then National Treasures, I think, hit very late in December or January of 17. And so that was kind of the the first year. And then they produced 2017 Dunruss. Uh, there was Torque in there and Select and Absolute. So they mm-hmm. removed Certified and removed Prism and put in Select and Absolute. Yeah, you can tell. Looking, I mean hindsight 2020 of course but you can tell they were just we're gonna stick with don russ and then see where else we can go and test them out and um i'm surprised they didn't do national treasures sooner i granted what was the first year 18 for national treasures i uh, know i think it was 17 it was 2016 or well, no, no, okay uh, okay yeah and the only reason I remember that is because I think Carl Edwards, um, that's when he retired abruptly in like January of 2017, if my memory is right. Because so I think there was like redemptions for him or something. But then they tried, you know, Prime and National Treasures and they went back to 2018. They tried Victory Lane as, and they went to pr- back to Prism, 18 Dunruss. I don't know what you guys think, but from what I've always heard from everybody, it always seems like Prime is the one that everybody wants back. I've seen some breaks with Prime, and there's a lot of great hits that still come out of that, even right now. I mean, it's I would love to see Prime come back. If they're going to insert a fifth um, set or a, a fifth release per year, that would be – I would pick Prime. I definitely I like I mean Prime as a cheaper price price point than National Treasures. One thing I did like, well, back in Victory Lane, uh, when they had the half case, you were getting that jumbo patch in that out of that eight box case. And then in 2019, Victory Lane, they um, did not do that. So then I guess they put those those patches into into Prime. So. I would take Prime over National Treasures, but that's me because I'm a, you know, I'm more of a set guy and not a booklet guy. Well, not even that. The price point on it is so much more conducive to more collectors. You know, where price the price point for National Treasures is, you're in or out. You know, Prime is that borderline. Well. Maybe I can get one or two, but I'm not going to spend 400, you know? Yeah, I, I agree because I'm probably going to buy one NT box this year. and That's it. Now, if they had prime, I would buy several. I'd probably buy four or five boxes of those at least. Now you got me missing prime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think that they could... Pr- I- Obviously, they could, but do you think it would be welcomed if they produced a set that was buyback autographs the way that Topps does for some of their baseball stuff? Do you think they've produced enough years of NASCAR trading cards to do a buyback set? I think so. I mean, they've been doing it now. This is, what, their sixth year of making cards. So, yeah, why not? 
Well, they did that with the Dunros, which was a huge success, I think. True, but a, a bonus autograph versus the standalone product is there's a wide gap in between, you know, especially when we're talking NASCAR, where it does seem like they are trying to be more, um, I don't know what the word is, but better selections instead of, you know, we talked last week, 74, that was the number we used, but 74 football releases versus four or five NASCAR. I mean, they're definitely being a lot more selective with what they put out for NASCAR. Yeah. It's a lot of work for them. I guess the buyback would be a little easier for them. You know, they don't have to go through the licensing and all that stuff. All that again, do they? They I shouldn't. Know. I mean, it's that thing of once you created it, I think it's always yours. So they would just have to pay that driver again, you know, obviously for more autographs if they're not under contract anymore. But I guess my question was more of, do we have enough different options to make a buyback to where it's just not all Don Russ cards, you know? Oh, there's plenty. I mean, you got to think of all the different, like Val was saying a while ago, I mean, you got absolute, you got prime, you got certified, you've got, you've got tons of different releases to choose from, you know, not to mention all the Chronicles cards. <clears throat> yeah. And even national treasure has base cards in it. So. Yeah. I mean, they, yeah, that'd be wild. Get some national, some national treasures base cards in a buyback. Boy, that would be weird. <laughs> that would be super limited. Yeah. Cause they're already tough to get. Well, gentlemen, Let's uh, move on over to our next segment, NASCAR News. What you got for us, Logan? Uh, well, some sad news to start out with is Bob Keselowski. He was the ARCA champion, and he also was uh, in the truck series in the early days. He passed away at age 70. He, had a, he was battling cancer. Um, I really feel for Brad and Brian. Um, it's, it's really sad because I remember, you know, when we used to have truck races here in Memphis, uh, and I don't know why, but Tyler, my son, he latched on to Bob Keselowski. He even has, yeah, I think he still has it, has a t-shirt for Bob Keselowski. And he latched, that was one of his favorite drivers back then. So it, that is very sad news. And our thoughts and prayers are going out to the Keselowski family. So just unfortunately, we had to start out with that. And um, the other thing that uh, I read was uh, they've officially broken ground out in the Los Angeles Coliseum for the to build the track for the race out there coming up in February. Uh, I'll just read what they said. It says NASCAR officials and dignitaries gathered Tuesday, which as we uh record this that was on the 21st of december uh they gathered tuesday for a groundbreaking ceremony at the los angeles memorial coliseum turning the first shovels of dirt on what will be a temporary quarter mile asphalt track for the 2022 bush light clash at the coliseum exhibition and what i thought was really cool about this is the ceremony took place exactly 100 years after the venue's original groundbreaking. So that was that was an added bonus. I think that was really cool. So I think we've talked about this before, but this is going to be an awesome race. This is going to be like um, kind of what they used to say about Bristol, you know, jet fighters in a gymnasium. It's going to be, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, um, you know, like uh, Bowman Gray Stadium. So it's going to be a really, it's, like I said, it's only a quarter mile track. So, I mean, they're going to have different heat races. And then of course, you know, they'll have the, the final race and all that, but it's going to be a cool race, I think. Um, and it'll give the people out in the West coast, a little taste of how cool NASCAR really is. Yeah. I was thinking of that quarter mile when you were saying, that. I was like, that's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, think about it. You know, your, your, your high school track by <laughs> at your high school is a quarter mile, isn't it? 
I think for so. The, for the track, yeah. So you got to run around that thing four times to do a mile. So that's not very big. And I, I saw some pictures of that too, and I thought it was interesting. They've got some gravel in there and all kinds of stuff that they're using, you know, I guess, as a base to lay down the asphalt. So, I mean, gosh, they're going to have to take all that stuff back out of there to put the football, you know, field back in there. So that, to me, that's, that is a tremendous amount of work, tremendous amount of money that they're spending to do this. I, I hope it's successful and I hope that, uh, it really showcases the new cars and everything. Uh, I, and honestly, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be cool. I really, really do. I get to give it NASCAR a hand. They are definitely shaking up the schedule, trying a lot of different things. I know the NASCAR traditionalists are probably, uh, upset with all those things and thinking they're gimmicks or whatever, but you know, dirt at Bristol and some of the other things they've done, but it's exciting. Yeah, the Rovals and all the things that they've done. They've added more road course races, which is, to me, very exciting. Uh, yeah, you're right. They're shaking it up, and I think they're I think they're doing a good job. And, you know, and I'm an old school guy because I have been following NASCAR pretty much since the late 70s. You know, say 78, 79. You know, but you know, back then, you, you all you had were like the Daytona 500 that was live, and then you'd see things on Wide World of Sports. But it wasn't until the 80s until ESPN got a hold of it that, that really made it popular. But, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of an old school guy. And, you know, I was kind of against some of this change, you know, because they're moving the numbers on the cars and all that stuff. And I've seen those now. And th there's there's been plenty of pictures out there on the social media. And they'll grow on me. You know, we're going to have one lug nut, you know, instead of five. You I mean, they're, they're really changing things up. I I'm embracing it. I think it's good. I, I think the numbers for viewership for NASCAR are going up. And now if we can just get these NASCAR fans to collect NASCAR cards, uh, then we'll really be doing something. Yeah, hopefully new collectors coming in from other sports that are collecting cards and coming in NASCAR and, make, you know, embracing NASCAR and uh, collecting them. So, yeah. Um, do you want to talk about the national treasures for 2021? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I don't think it's a much of a surprise, but you know, we've seen some tweets, photos of drivers with uh, signing national treasures and send them back in. So uh, it's been reported that the data slipped to January 14th. It was supposed to be out December 31st. So, it's going to be pushed into next year or so. Yeah, because didn't we just see Michael Waltrip signing a bunch of NT cards here just like a couple weeks ago? Yes. Yeah, and when I saw that, I'm going, oh, boy. <laughs> this is going to get uh, skewed for sure, and it has. Well, with the holidays coming up and everything else going on, I mean, uh, not that it's in, in expected. I'm sure everybody was trying to do their best to – you know, try to stick to those dates, but uh, 2021 will go down as one of the wackiest, I guess you could say, uh, all around with cards as well as the pandemic. So, yeah, um, I, you know, I, I think, you know, part of the reason for this is, like you said, they've had supply chain issues and things like that, the things that are beyond their control, things that they cannot you know, predict or forecast for, and you, they just, like you said, they have to roll with it. So we just have to accept it. I mean, some people may be mad. I mean, I was kind of hoping I would have some, have a national treasures box underneath the tree that I could open up for Christmas. But instead I got today, I, I ended up getting two uh, 2011 element boxes in the mail. So that's going to be my Christmas. Ooh, love me some 2011 element. Yeah. Well, you let us have to, you will let have to let us know about those civil foil packs and how you do. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna open up both of them. I may open up one of them. I've got a lot of recording I want to do during the Christmas break. You know, I've got um, I think some uh, was it certified box? I forget forget all the different boxes I've got. <laughs> I've got some blasters that I want to open. 
and a whole bunch of other things. I just haven't had time with Christmas and everything to sit down and, and record all those. And it's really funny now, you know, I used to open those things up and not worry about recording. Now it's like, okay, I buy one, I got to record it. And, you know, now it's just the matter of time of just you know, finding the actual time to do it. I know exactly what you mean. I got um, 2012 Fanfare blasters I haven't opened yet. You're going to record those, right? I am. That's why I haven't opened them yet. <laughs> have you been holding yeah. those for nine years? No, I have not. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes I feel like it, but put it in, on the shelf in the display case so I don't forget about them, but I've forgotten about them. And, you know, whenever I see uh, stuff on eBay and some of the other places, and I can kick myself for not buying the 2013 total memorabilia. There's some blasters out there for 25 a piece. And uh, those were, those would have been good to open looking for the Kyle Larson. So, but the 2012 has the Bubba Wallace and Ryan Blaney and those. So, but to your point, Logan, the, yeah, I kind of hold off. Cause like, well, I need to record these and then do post post yeah. production on them. Yeah. I've kind of, <laughs> My videos are raw, man. When I when I do them, I mean, I just record it and I just let it fly. Whatever whatever I say or whatever mistakes I make or whatever happens, it's just it's just there for posterity. I don't do any editing or any of that kind of stuff. But luckily, I think most of them have turned out eh, fairly well. Do you have any uh, NASCAR news on any eBay auctions? Yeah, uh, I do. I, I shared them with you guys, but I'll start it out. Um, most of the things I was looking at are, are, are Prism from this last week. And from what I can tell, things are really starting to slow down with Prism and people listing cards because there's a lot less listings and a lot less higher results than there have been in the previous weeks. Uh, for example, I didn't see any color blasts from 2021 that ended last week at all. Not, not any. Uh, seems like to me like the stained glass cards are getting a little little bit more traction and uh, the lava flows are starting to kind of settle down a little bit. Uh, like for example, there was a, uh, on the 18th, there was a 2021 prism lava flow Haley Deegan. It went for $91 and five bids. And I think just, it hadn't been all that long ago. That thing, that card was well over a hundred dollars. So it's, it's starting to come down a little bit. Uh, something else that I saw too, was a uh, Jeff Gordon 2021 patented penmanship hyper green yellow autograph number four of 10. It had 20 bids and went for $152.50. So that's strong for Jeff Gordon because I, I picked up one. It wasn't as low number as that, but I think I picked mine up for it's like $70 or something like that, which I thought I got a great deal. Uh, and of course, Natalie Decker is continues to be hot. She's uh, she had a 2021 uh, prism stained glass, and st this is a st stained glass. Now those things are kind of rare too, and it went for sixty nine dollars with two bids. Wow! Is there any other, any things you guys want to talk about on that? I did did see the um, a nineteen eighty three Uno. Dale Earnhardt Sr. Ricky PSA 9 went for just under $1,300. That's awesome. So what does that make a PSA 10? I don't know. <laughs> I, think... um, I imagine a few a few thousand. Uh, they're, they're so rare. Oh, um, yeah. 83 Unos and especially the uh, Dale Earnhardt Seniors. But I was going to say, look, when you were talking about it, you know, we're getting into the time where I guess it's kind of out of sight, out of mind. And now is between now and probably mid January, end of January is a good time to, you know, look for NASCAR trading card auctions of, you know, stuff that you're looking for. See if you can get some good deals. You know, I'm thinking, you know, Ty Gibbs and Kyle Bush and, you know, at least the hall of famers, you know, um, Kevin Harvick and, Martin Truex Jr., Danny Hamlin. You can probably, you know, looking for auctions, not necessarily buy it nows. Uh, yeah. buy, you know, the buy it nows are usually going to be uh, at the higher end. So uh, auctions basically, you know, it's kind of 
to chance, whatever. Who, and that's one thing I like. I like and don't like about eBay, right? So an auction one is great if you have something that there's a lot of people looking for it at one time to help drive up the price. Otherwise, if even if as rare as it is, only if only one person's looking for it or one person's only willing to fight for it, then you're only going to get that price. It's not going to drive it up. So. Yep, exactly. Yeah, you're gonna lo- you're gonna lose money on that. That's that's where the bot nails are, are really good for stuff like that. Yeah. So between now and uh, Daytona, I think is when you want to look and see. Even I'm not sure about Haley Deegan and um, Natalie Decker or some of their earlier stuff, but just keep an eye on that and put in your safe search. And uh, now is the time. Uh, I totally agree. Th- prices prices on just the 2021 prism are coming down you know the more stuff that gets out there you know more people already have some of it so you, they're not going to be bidding so you're going to be able to find stuff at you know at least a reasonable price if not better because like i said the, these these lava flow cards are coming down in price so you might be able to to pick up a set of those eventually you know if you buy them piecemeal for a reasonable price no doubt I don't know if we have anything else, gentlemen. We're, clo- we're approaching an hour. Uh, I, I do have one more thing about eBay, though. There is one current auction for a Color Blast. I won't even, It's really not even an auction. It's a buy it now. It's a Richard Petty Color Blast, and they've got $499 or best offer. And that's the only one out there for 2021 right now. So those things are drying up or people aren't busting as much or something, but they're, you're not seeing a whole bunch of those Color Blasts right now. I remember somebody on the nuts um, Facebook page, I think hit that and they were taking offers and they were going to put it out on eBay. Uh, that's probably, yeah. Maybe the same one. I thought about maybe putting in an offer, maybe for 300 bucks or two fifty, three hundred dollars and see if the guy nibbles on it. I don't know. Never hurts. And only a few of those. So to your point, like you said earlier in the show about how rare they are. Yep. And one more thing too, uh, and this is this pertains to Formula One, and our new champion Max Verstappen. He had a 2020 Topps Chrome F1 Max Verstappen red refractor out of five. It was graded a PSA eight, and this sold back on the 14th. We I don't think we've talked about it. We I think I aimed to talk about it last week and forgot, but that card went for. $35,000. Say what now? 2020 Topps Chrome F1 autograph, autographed red refractor out of five, PSA eight, 35K. Stock up and save. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Amazing. There, there's no NASCAR. C- card on the planet that's even close to that price yeah i I don't even know where to begin with that that price compared to nascar yeah that is simply amazing somebody bought it now i mean it was a thirty-five thousand dollars. click buy it now and they bought it a psa 8 it's not even a 10 (laughs) yeah well i think with that you're you're buying the the three of five, as opposed to eight. The eight, uh, I think the encapsulation, or whatever, just kind of preserves it as yeah. authentic and everything else. So you're not really buying the buying the grade there. That's incredible. I don't, <laughs> I don't know how you can follow that up. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, we, we might want to just leave it right there. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, but it really is not going to help anybody listening by the time the show comes out. Tops now put out the the last 10 cards, I believe to the F one series. And so there's a few in there. I think a few max ran stopping and Lewis Hamilton, as well as uh, the formula two champion, the F one highest finishing rookie. And then a few other, other. So uh, if you've missed those, there still might be an opportunity to look at eBay or something like that to find a card that uh, you're wanting uh, like I said, there was more than one Max fan stopping. So, um, but the one that kind of piqued my interest was the F2 champion. We'll see how that plays out in the future um, and what the print runs are for them. But 
Uh, that's more of a FYI. So you can take a look at the aftermarket. Yep. Yep. You never know. That guy may be the next, uh, next big thing. Possibly. So he does have an, a Ricky card logo on there. So, and we all know what the 2020 Lewis Hamilton's going for. So, <laughs> yep. So I guess one last thing, let's talk about this real quick. Um, where do, where do y'all, since Christmas is coming up, what are y'all's plans for Christmas? Y'all gonna stay home? I'm, I'll be staying home. I'm gonna be busting cards, doing videos and just hanging out. That's, that's, that's my Christmas. Well, I'm, I'm the younger one and my kids are still, my kids are still little. So we stay home on the 25th and travel 24th, 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. I'll be home, Logan, your point, probably trying to get some videos finished and do some website type stuff and some get some new audio clips and everything else ready for the new year uh, with the show. So Cool. And I don't know if anybody hears it or not, but I have my, my puppy dog is up here and she's snoring. So if you hear snoring, it's not me. <laughs> we, we put her to sleep. <laughs> so, well, um, if that, if any, nothing else, uh, we've hit the, the one hour mark so much for a short show again. <laughs> Thank you everybody for listening. Uh, please like, and share the podcast. Appreciate all of the listeners. Thanks again to our sponsors, Panini America, and our seasonal sponsors, Duncan's Toy Test, Greenway Press, and Little Nero's Pizza. Thank you. We hope that you have a wonderful Christmas, and we will see you next week.